G'day legends, it's Mark here from North Oz and I just thought I'd show you just a quick little fix that uh, for an issue that I've uh, run into. I just got my new tray and canopy which I'm super stoked about but unfortunately I decided to put um, a set of LED tail lights in the back and what's happened from that is these indicators go really really fast and that's a problem because it looks weird. Uh, it also looked different on the left side where it would only go to kind of halfway here and then it would stay at halfway so it's also not safe and probably not legal so to fix it it's quite simple and I'm going to show you exactly how to fix it right now. So I'm going to show you this little wiring um, mess I've got down here but I'm going to explain it for you so you can kind of understand what's going on. So basically what you want to do is you want to try and get that ground wire and the positive wire which is just the wire that goes to your indicator and what you're trying to do with that is you need to trick the system into thinking that it has an additional load on it. So these are their own circuits. So the left side is its own circuit and the right side is its own circuit. So when I go around to the car now and I will, you see that's flashing like crazy. It doesn't look good. But then when I flick it to the left side, see that's normal. And you can see it here that it's behaving normally as well. And that's because it's being tricked into thinking that it has that extra 21 or so watts. Now I've tried a couple of different ones, uh, mostly because I wired it up wrong the first time. And I tried a 50 watt and it did the exact same job as the 25 watts. So uh, really all we need to do is just try to trick that extra 20 or so watts and then we're all good to go. So this is how I did it. I used these, uh, what are they called? Electrical terminals. And as you can tell, I'm no expert on this, but I use these electrical terminals and what they are, they're a male and female. So it allows you to be able to splice into that line very, very easily. And the benefit of that is it means that you're not using these things. Because what I actually did the first time was I used the supplied, uh, I think they're called splice something, splice, splice clamps or something like that. And these were no good because when I actually plugged it all in using this uh, and it was no good because it didn't even, when I took it off today, after being very disappointed yesterday, after I took it off today, I found out that in fact, it wasn't my fault. This didn't even pierce the cable. So that was no good. You don't wanna be using that. So I went down to my local auto barn and the guys there are super helpful and they um, suggested to use these male and female connectors so basically what you want to be doing is you put one connector on so you basically cut your uh, ground wire in half you're going to put a connector on one half of the ground wire and another connector on the other half of the ground wire okay that's going to leave you with a nice little once you connect them up together a nice little section here where you can connect up to okay and that's where you're going to put one of the ends to your load resistor Okay, so you put your load resistor there and then you do the same thing for the positive uh, indicator wire. So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna cut that indicator wire in half. You're gonna put another one of these male-female connectors, another one of those male-female connectors on the other side there. And then you're gonna have this nice little extra bit that's gonna stick out. And that's where you attach the other side of your load resistor. And so now in your kind of series, this, this circuit here, what we've got now is that tricked load instead of ha having to put, oh, and that's hot. I just touched that, that's hot because that's going to be starting to soak up a lot of that heat. So it's very important as well that we don't put that anywhere near these wires. So that's gonna be fitted onto the underside of this aluminum here. So that's like a heat sink. So keep that in mind. Uh, so yeah, you basically are creating this circuit and you've got that extra load tricking it into thinking that it's still got its halogen or its filament bulb in there. Now this has worked for me. Uh, if you are using a, uh, I don't know, maybe you have a different system or something like that, maybe you have 24 volt, whatever, make sure that you consult an auto electrician because they actually know what they're doing and I don't, uh, but this worked for me. It's very simple and uh, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments section and I hope that this quick little video helped you out to uh, fix your hyper flashing because that caused me quite a bit of stress and now that it's fixed, I'm, uh, I'm very happy with the result. So if this helped you guys out, make sure you subscribe and, um, and yeah, and leave a comment if it did help you with your project. I always enjoy hearing your projects and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. 
Really quickly, guys, before we go, I just wanted to say that if you are doing this for a 70 series Land Cruiser like what I have here, I have this wiring diagram that I found, and I found it to be quite useful actually, especially for the ground wire. It was accurate for that and for the indicator. So I'm gonna leave that up there on the screen for you. I also wanted to mention that most vehicles out there have what's called a flasher relay which is as simple as just taking out a relay. It's kind of like a small little box and you can swap that out for an LED compatible one, which just takes into consideration the fact that you now have LED bulbs. But unfortunately on these new Land Cruisers, they do not have that. Instead, it's all computer controlled. I don't know how they do it, but ultimately you need to use these load resistors. So if you're someone who uh, is doing this on your own vehicle, have a look into flasher relays for your uh, vehicle first. But I also have one more resource for you guys to talk about before we go. One other resource that really helped me out was uh, this guy. I'll leave a card to it up the top of the screen for you to look at as well. And he goes through in a lot more detail how the actual load resistors work and uh, gives a pretty good example. So I just wanted to make this video just for the 70 series Land Cruiser owners out there and for people who just want a super quick uh, overview on how it actually looks on the car. So with all that said and done, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next video. Take care.